The assembly of the Royal Canadian Navy's future HMCS Max Bernays at Halifax Shipyard is a highly coordinated and complex process. One of the most significant milestones in the assembly of Max Bernays occurred when the first two of these three mega blocks were moved outside in preparation for final assembly. The center mega block, weighing a massive 2,847 tons and measuring 121 feet in length, 99 feet in height, and 62 feet in width, was moved at a speed of just 2 km per hour. This delicate operation was made possible by 22 self-propelled modular transporters, SPMTs, advanced vehicles equipped with 28 axles and 496 wheels. These transporters can turn their wheels in any direction, allowing for precise movements of the enormous block. The total time to move the center mega block to the land level was approximately 2 hours and 20 minutes. Following the successful relocation of the center section, attention turned to the stern mega block. This block, while smaller than the center, still weighed an impressive 1,594 tons and measured 117 feet in length, 47 feet in height, and 62 feet in width. Like the center block, the stern section was moved at 2 km per hour, but this time using 16 SPMTs with 90 axles and 360 wheels. The move took 1 hour and 45 minutes to complete. Once the mega blocks were in place, the final assembly process began. Skilled workers meticulously aligned the blocks, ensuring that every measurement was precise before welding them together. The welding process was a critical phase, requiring exact precision to join the sections into a seamless and structurally sound vessel. This phase not only bonded the physical structure of the ship but also paved the way for the installation of systems and outfitting that would transform the blocks into a fully functional naval patrol ship. Building a massive offshore wind farm is a truly remarkable engineering feat. These wind farms, like the Wehamate project in Germany's North Sea, are essential not only for producing clean, renewable energy but also for demonstrating just how advanced our construction technology has become. Imagine the coordination and precision required to install giant wind turbines in the open sea, where each turbine can power thousands of homes. In this piece, we'll break down how an offshore wind farm is built and how it all comes together. The first step in creating an offshore wind farm is conceptualizing the design. Engineers and ARCs come together to determine the size of the turbines, the layout of the farm, and the materials needed. These turbines aren't your typical windmills, they are towering structures that can be as tall as a 60-story building. Each turbine must be carefully designed to withstand harsh marine conditions like strong winds, salty water, and unpredictable weather patterns. Once the design is finalized, it's time to choose the right location. For Veja Mate, the chosen site is 130 kilometers north of Eameshaven in the North Sea. It's far enough from the coast to catch strong winds but close enough to efficiently transport the electricity generated back to shore. Now that the location is selected and the design is in place, the actual construction can begin. The first major component is the monopile, which is essentially a giant steel tube that serves as the foundation for the wind turbine. These monopiles are manufactured in a specialized facility, often in ports like Rostock, Germany. Each monopile is a true engineering marvel. They can reach up to 85 meters in length, with a diameter of 7.8 meters, and can weigh as much as 1,300 tons. The fabrication process begins with steel cutting, just like building a ship. Workers cut and shape massive sheets of steel, welding them together to form these enormous cylindrical structures. Once the monopiles are complete, they undergo rigorous testing to ensure they can handle the extreme forces they'll face at sea. Once the monopiles are ready, they need to be transported from the fabrication facility to the installation site in the North Sea. Given their enormous size and weight, this is no small task. The monopiles are loaded onto specialized barges designed to carry these heavy loads through narrow waterways like the Kiel Canal, which connects the Baltic Sea to the North Sea. After arriving at the port in Eameshaven, Netherlands, the monopiles are prepared for the next stage, installation. They are transferred to an installation vessel, such as the Skyla, a ship equipped with cranes and other tools specifically for installing offshore wind turbines. With the monopiles on board, the installation vessel heads out to the wind farm site.
Once there, the real magic begins. The vessel is equipped with a 650-ton double-level pile gripper frame, designed to hold the monopile steady even in high seas. One by one, the monopiles are lifted by cranes, appended, and positioned upright in the water. Then comes the driving process, where each monopile is driven deep into the seabed, sometimes up to 40 meters below the surface. This ensures that the turbines will remain securely anchored, even in rough conditions. This process is not only about brute force, it's also about precision. Engineers use advanced sonar and GPS technology to ensure that each monopile is driven to the exact depth and location. To protect marine life, noise mitigation measures like hydro sound dampers and bubble curtains are deployed to reduce the sound of the pile driving process. Once the monopiles are securely in place, the next step is to attach the transition pieces. These are the yellow structures you often see at the base of offshore wind turbines. They connect the monopile to the turbine tower and also house some of the essential equipment for the turbine. Transition pieces and anode cages, which protect the turbines from corrosion, are transported from Aalborg, Denmark, to the installation site. The transition pieces are then lifted into place and bolted onto the monopiles, ensuring a tight and secure fit. This step is crucial for the overall stability of the turbine. With the foundation set, it's time to install the tower and the turbine itself. The tower sections are assembled onshore and then transported to the wind farm site, where they are lifted and placed on top of the transition pieces. Once the tower is in place, the turbine components, such as the nacelle, which houses the generator, and the rotor blades, are lifted into position. Each rotor blade can be over 80 meters long, and attaching them to the nacelle is a delicate operation that requires perfect weather conditions and precise core. Vartzilla, a company with a long-standing reputation for excellence in marine propulsion since 1834, has strategically expanded its production to China, a country recognized for its craftsmanship and expertise in manufacturing. This partnership, formed over the past two decades, merges Vartzilla's high standards with China's growing prominence in shipbuilding, providing customers with enhanced value, faster delivery, and reliable products that meet global quality expectations. Located in the heart of the world's largest shipbuilding region, Vartzilla's Chinese operations have built a strong foundation based on state-of-the-art technology and rigorous quality assurance systems. These facilities uphold the same uncompromising quality that customers have come to expect from any Vartzilla product, earning praise from visiting clients who observe firsthand the company's top-notch operational standards. The propulsion products manufactured at Vartzilla's facilities in China have become key components in many high-end European-built cruise ships and government vessels. Vartzilla's presence in China extends beyond a single facility, it has been active in the region for more than 20 years, leveraging a combination of subsidiaries, long-term licensing agreements, and joint ventures. The company's production in China includes propellers, auxiliary generating sets, and automation services. Building and maintaining large cruise ships is a complex and highly coordinated process that combines cutting-edge technology, intricate design, and exceptional craftsmanship. These ships are not just vehicles for transportation, but floating cities designed to provide passengers with an unmatched experience of luxury, comfort, and entertainment while at sea. The process of constructing such massive vessels, from the drawing board to the final sea trials, is a marvel of modern engineering, often involving multiple shipyards, thousands of workers, and years of planning and execution. Cruise ships are among the largest man-made structures on the water, and their construction is an incredible feat of engineering. Typically, the process begins with the conceptualization and design of the ship, which can take months or even years. Architects and designers work closely with cruise lines to develop a vision for the ship, focusing on aspects such as the number of passengers, onboard amenities, entertainment venues, and the overall layout of the vessel. During this stage, decisions are made about the ship's tonnage, length, width, and height, as well as the types of materials and technologies that will be used.
Once the design phase is complete, the actual construction begins. Cruise ships are built in stages, with the shipyard creating separate sections or mega blocks that will later be joined together. These blocks can weigh thousands of tons and are built separately to ensure the efficient use of time and space in the shipyard. Workers in the shipyard cut, weld, and assemble steel plates to form the ship's hull, decks, and superstructure. Some of these blocks are so massive that they require specialized transporters to move them within the shipyard, sometimes at speeds as slow as 2 km per hour. For example, in the construction of the HMCS Max Bernays, the Royal Canadian Navy's Arctic and Offshore Patrol Ship, the massive midship megablock, weighing 2,847 tons, and measuring 121 feet long, 99 feet high, and 62 feet wide, was carefully moved at this slow pace using a transporter with 496 wheels. The careful coordination of these moves is critical to ensure the proper alignment of the blocks when they are finally assembled together. After the individual blocks are completed, they are moved to the dry dock, where they are carefully lifted and assembled. This is a highly precise operation, as each block must fit perfectly to ensure the structural integrity of the vessel. During this phase, the ship's engines, power systems, and other critical components are installed. These massive engines, often capable of generating tens of thousands of horsepower, provide the ship with the necessary propulsion to move at speeds upwards of 20 to 25 knots, depending on the vessel. Another fascinating aspect of cruise ship construction is the modular approach to building the ship's interior spaces, particularly the cabins. Rather than building the cabins directly inside the ship, Many shipyards opt to construct the cabins in separate factories where they can be mass-produced and fully furnished before being transported to the shipyard. These prefabricated cabins are then lifted into place on the ship by cranes and slotted into position like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. This approach not only saves time but also ensures consistency and quality and minimizes errors that could arise during manual construction. Once all the blocks are assembled and the ship's exterior and interior spaces are in place, the ship undergoes various finishing touches. The hull is painted, often with specialized anti-fouling paint that reduces drag and improves fuel efficiency. The ship's name and logo are inscribed on the side of the vessel, and the outdoor spaces, such as swimming pools, water slides, and other recreational areas, are added. After all these elements are in place, the ship is finally ready for its float-out ceremony, marking the first time the ship touches water. Modern cruise ships are marvels of technology and functionality. These floating cities are designed to offer every amenity and comfort imaginable, from luxurious suites and gourmet dining options to entertainment venues that rival those found on land. Cruise ships are equipped with state-of-the-art technology that enhances safety, navigation, and the overall passenger experience. One of the key innovations in cruise ship technology is the use of pod propulsion systems, such as the Azipod system, which allows for greater maneuverability and fuel efficiency. These systems, which consist of steerable thrusters that can rotate 360 degrees, eliminate the need for traditional rudders and provide more precise control over the ship's movement. This technology also reduces fuel consumption by up to 20%, making modern cruise ships more environmentally friendly than their predecessors. In terms of passenger experience, cruise ships offer an array of features that cater to a wide range of interests. From theaters and cinemas to rock climbing walls and zip lines, there is no shortage of activities to keep passengers entertained. Many ships even have full-scale amusement parks, complete with roller coasters and water slides. Dining options on cruise ships are equally diverse, with everything from fine dining restaurants to casual buffet-style eateries. Some ships boast Michelin-starred chefs and offer culinary experiences that rival those found in top restaurants around the world. Cruise ships are also designed with sustainability in mind. Many modern vessels are equipped with advanced wastewater treatment systems that ensure the ship's impact on the environment is minimized. These systems treat sewage and other waste products to meet international environmental standards, ensuring that the ship's operations do not harm the oceans or marine life. In addition, cruise ships are increasingly adopting energy-efficient technologies, such as LED lighting and air conditioning systems that reduce energy consumption and lower the ship's carbon footprint. 
The cruise ship industry is experiencing a period of rapid growth, with more ships being built and launched every year. According to industry data, more than 100 new cruise ships are expected to enter service between 2020 and 2030, with many of these ships being larger and more technologically advanced than ever before. Some of the largest cruise ships currently in operation, such as Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas, can accommodate over 6,000 passengers and more than 2,200 crew members, making them true giants of the seas. The cost of building a modern cruise ship can range from $500 million to over $1.5 billion, depending on the size and features of the vessel. These ships are major investments for cruise lines, and their construction is a multi-year process that involves shipyards, suppliers, and designers from around the world. Once completed, these ships can provide service for several decades, offering passengers unforgettable experiences on the world's oceans. Once a cruise ship is built and has been in operation for some time, maintenance becomes a critical part of ensuring the vessel's continued safety and performance. Regular maintenance is necessary to keep the ship in optimal condition and to prevent costly breakdowns or accidents at sea. This maintenance is typically carried out during dry dock periods, when the ship is taken out of the water and undergoes a thorough inspection and refurbishment. During a dry dock maintenance period, the ship's hull is cleaned and repainted, and any signs of corrosion or wear are addressed. This is particularly important because the ship's hull is constantly exposed to salt water, which can cause rust and other damage over time. The propellers, rudders, and thrusters are also inspected and repaired if necessary, ensuring that the ship can continue to operate efficiently. In addition to the exterior maintenance, the ship's engines and mechanical systems are overhauled during dry dock. This includes replacing worn-out parts, checking the lubrication systems, and making sure that everything is functioning as it should. The air conditioning and ventilation systems are also serviced to ensure that they are working efficiently, providing a comfortable environment for passengers. The ship's interior spaces, including cabins, restaurants, and entertainment venues, are also refurbished during dry dock. Carpets may be replaced, furniture repaired, and any wear and tear addressed to ensure that passengers have a pleasant experience. Safety equipment, such as lifeboats and fire extinguishers, is inspected and replaced if necessary to comply with international maritime safety regulations. One example of such a maintenance process is the work carried out at the Bentago Express dry dock for high-speed ferries like the Fred Olson Express. In this facility, teams of engineers, technicians, and workers meticulously inspect, clean, and repair all aspects of the ferry to ensure it is seaworthy and efficient. From the cleaning of the hull to the inspection of the propulsion systems, every aspect of the ship is maintained to the highest standards. Overall, regular maintenance is essential to extending the life of cruise ships and ensuring that they remain safe, efficient, and comfortable for passengers. Without proper maintenance, the performance of these ships would degrade over time, leading to higher operating costs and the risk of mechanical failures. The construction and maintenance of large cruise ships represent some of the most complex and challenging operations in modern engineering. These vessels are not only massive in scale but also require careful planning, coordination, and precision to build and maintain. From the initial design phase to the final float-out ceremony, cruise ships are a testament to human ingenuity and innovation. Once in operation, regular maintenance ensures that these ships continue to offer passengers unforgettable experiences on the high seas for decades to come.